Oh, we go. Ang ito ni Bia Pakah Mato, katimula ka nadi iti sa maka ng dalawa di ka tunte pernah tapi nya dan bayi mento kada menghany ai kasa kun leh ne ce puh mok ong ci mun jumbeh sum ceu thank you uh, good morning mr Lama president nya sum mos the bench sum council lo patien lo lo srai chal krom uh, today, uh, I will be presenting key documents that relate to the CPK policy on enemies and the targeting of specific groups. I will uh, start with documents relating to the general policy of the party, the existence of a joint criminal enterprise to eliminate, through the use of violence, all perceived enemies of the CPK. These documents will demonstrate the origins of that policy, how it was developed, and how it was agreed to uh, during the DK period by the leaders of the party and by each key organization of the CPK and Democratic Campuchia regime including the Central and Standing Committees, the government ministries, the military divisions, and the zones and independent sectors throughout the country. These documents will show the key party lines relating to enemies, the decision to use revolutionary violence against enemies of the CPK, the identification of the enemies with whom the party believed it had antagonistic or life and death contradictions. The constant call for revolutionary vigilance against internal enemies burrowing from within and the directive to be on the offensive to smash, resolve or sweep cleanly away all enemies. The second half of my presentation will focus on documents showing the party policy or plan to target officials and soldiers of the Khmer Republic or Law No regime. And because this issue is of central importance to this case, I will endeavor to cover that relatively thor thoroughly and present documents on it separately. However, in regards to the targeting of other groups, such as the Cham, Vietnamese, and Buddhists, I will not do a separate presentation, but instead will present a few key documents relating to the targeting of each of those groups as part of my first presentation on general enemy policy. And I will start today with a few documents that show uh, the origins of the CPK policy relating to enemies, where the party leaders got these ideas from. E3-9, E3-9, is Philip Short's book, Pol Pot, History of a Nightmare. And starting at uh, English ERN 0039-6256, French 0063-9526, and this book is not yet translated uh, into Khmer. Philip Short discusses the communist literature that was studied by Salat Sar, Ng Sri, and other members of the Marxist circle in Paris. And he states, quote, the cells met once a week, usually for a couple of hours in the evening, to discuss the week's events and to study Marxist texts. They started with Lenin's ABC of Communism, followed by the Communist Manifesto and Mao Zedong's On New Democracy. 
There were also evenings of criticism and self-criticism when cell members analyzed their shortcomings and those of their comrades. End quote. And in the ensuing pages, Philip Short discusses the particular influence of Stalin on Salat Tsar and the other Khmer students in the circle, referring to Stalinism as, quote, the official ideology and constant rallying cry of the French Communist Party at the time. And I would like to read a passage on that subject, uh, which is from English ERN 0039-6258-59, through 59, French ERN 0063-9529-59. Through three one. This passage uh, discusses how a paper written by Stalin titled The History of the Communist Party, Bolshevik, of the USSR, how this paper was particularly influential on Pol Pot and the other mem members of the Marxist circle. Short writes as follows, quote, this work, written by Stalin in 1938 in the aftermath of the Great Terror, was used as a political primer by communist parties all over the world. Mao had it translated into Chinese. Ho Chi Minh issued a Vietnamese version. It cannot, therefore, of itself be blamed for the singular barbarism of future Cambodian communist practice, but it was a crucial formative influence. The history of the Communist Party Bolsheviks hammered home six basic lessons. Some of them, like the need to stay close to the masses and not to become dizzy with success, were typically honored in the breach. But Stalin's four other precepts marked indelibly, indelibly the thinking of the future Cambodian revolutionaries. He stressed the importance of correct leadership, without which the cause of the proletarian revolution will be ruined, and of criticism and self-criticism. He taught that Marxist-Leninism was not a dogma. And above all, he urged eternal vigilance. One of the watchwords of the Bolshevik party, Stalin wrote, is that the party grows stronger, ever stronger, by cleansing itself of opportunist elements. And then there is a quote from Stalin's paper. Without waging an intransigent struggle against the opportunists in its own ranks, the party of the working class cannot carry out its role. It might seem that the Bolsheviks have spent too much time on the struggle and accorded it too much importance. That is absolutely false. We can no more tolerate opportunism among us than we can tolerate an ulcer in a healthy body. There is no way we can allow doubters, opportunists, capitulationists, and traitors within the leading headquarters of the working class. A fortress is taken most easily from within. To be victorious, we must, before all else, purge the working class party and its forward citadel its leading headquarters of capitulationists, deserters, criminals, and traitors. Short continues, the history offered other lessons too. 
on the importance of revolutionaries using both legal and illegal forms of struggle in order to win power, and on the need for a monolithic and combative, intrinsically elitist party for which candidates must be vigorously screened. But the burden of Stalin's message was that communists must constantly be on guard against political crooks, tricksters, and agents of foreign spy organizations. Such people, he wrote, would go to any lengths to camouflage their vile designs and worm their way into the party using membership as a mask for sabotage and betrayal. The only correct response to these dregs of the human species was pitiless repression. Now, while the CPK leaders were heavily influenced by Stalin. Philip Short also notes later in his book at English 00396336, French 00639616. Short notes that the communist leaders in Cambodia rejected a concept put forth in 1956 by Stalin's successor, Khrushchev, the doctrine of peaceful transition to socialism, also called the parliamentary road to socialism, which Short describes as an idea that, quote, in the era of peaceful coexistence between the two world blocs, communist parties could achieve power through elections rather than by class struggle and revolutionary violence. The second document, Your Honours, that I would like to present that relates to the origins of the party policy on enemies is E152.2, that's E152.2, and this is Tet Sambat's book, Behind the Killing Fields. The relevant passage is at English ERN 0075-7506, French 0084-9394-95, and Khmer 0085-8278-79. And this part of the book discusses the influence of Mao Zedong and others on Pol Pot and Noon Chea's formulation of party lines. And the excerpt reads as follows. Quote, the two, referring to, referring to Pol Pot and Noon Chea, searched for the principles that would be the basis of the Communist Party. Pol Pot was in charge of researching national issues, such as government leaders and the situation in Phnom Penh. Noon Chea was in charge of collecting news on the situation in the countryside, including agriculture and local party members. Pol Pot often went to the National Library to study French documents, books, and other publications. Noon Chea never went to the library, but bought books about politics and political principles, including books about Vietnam, the Soviet Union, China, and other communist publications. Noon Chea read The Resistance Will Win by Vietnamese communist leader Trung Chin, who wrote the book in 1947 as a set of directives on guerrilla warfare. He read essays on building a political party 
by Chinese President Liu Shaoqi, who would later become one of the most prominent victims of the Cultural Revolution. Nunchea also studied books by Vladimir Lenin and Stalin, while Pol Pot read Lenin's left-wing communism, an infantile disorder. But Nunchea's favorite readings came from Mao Zedong. And here, uh, a quote is attributed to Nunchea. I liked reading books about how to work in secret, and Vietnamese books that talked about the torture and arrest of communist members, Nunchea said. Chinese books talk about secret work and the people who pretended they were communists but were really spies. End of quote. I will now uh, present a number of documents that discuss the actual party lines that were adopted by the Communist Party of Camp Chia in relation to enemies and the use of revolutionary violence. A key document that discusses the subject is E3-11. E3-11 which is the September 1977 issue of the party publication Revolutionary Flag. Uh, in this issue, this issue published a speech that was given by Pol Pot that month on the occasion of the 17th anniversary of the founding of the party. As an introduction to the significance of the speech, uh, it is important to note the statement that appears right at the beginning of the speech which states, on the occasion, on this occasion of the celebration of the 17th anniversary of the founding of our Communist Party of Camp Chia, our party has decided to publicly and officially announce the Communist Party of Camp Chia to the country and the world. Because this speech was intended by the party leadership to be a public statement to the world describing what the party stood for, it was broadcast on the radio and there are a number of contemporaneous documents from the time period in which the content of the speech is also recorded. And in addition to the rev revolutionary flag I will be presenting, the same speech can also be found in the Phibis records for that month, E3-143 at English 00168-771-76, Khmer 00769-652. Through six three French zero zero seven nine three 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 through three nine and uh, the Phibis published excerpts from Pol Pot's speech and reported that it was given on the twenty seventh of September nineteen seventy seven at a mass meeting attended by all members of the Central Committee and more than 10,000 representatives of workers, cooperative peasants, the Cambodian Army, and various departments and cabinet ministries in Phnom Penh. It also indicates that the entire five-hour speech was later broadcast on the Phnom Penh domestic radio station on the 29th of September. September 1977, and a, another admitted document, E3-144, E3-144, includes a French translation of this speech that was published by the DK Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1978. This speech is thus particularly relevant because it was the party leaders' attempt to explain their policies 
and turning to the content of that speech in E3 11, a uh, lengthy discussion of the strategic lines that were decided at the first Congress of the party can be found beginning at Khmer 0006. 3136, English 0048, French 0049, The first point discussed by Pol Pot, Pol Pot in this part of the speech was the conclusion of the party congress that Kampuchea at the time was a semi-colonial country and a satellite of the imperialists, especially the American and therefore, quote, the mission of national revolu revolution meant attacking and driving out imperialism to liberate the country. The second point in his speech can be found beginning at Khmer 0063138, English 0048622820. And French 00492814. It reads as follows Quote, The Congress analyzed and defined the contradictions directly inside Kampuchean society. At the time that we were working out the party's line, Kampuchean society was divided into five distinct classes. The working class, the peasant class, the petty bourgeoisie class, the capitalist class, and the feudalist class. In all, there were five classes. Were there contradictions between the various classes? There were, and they were complicated ones. There were contradictions between the workers and the capitalists between the petty bourgeoisie and the capitalists, between the peasants and the landowners, between the capitalists and the peasants. The contradictions were complex and much entangled. But which contradictions played the leading role in society at that time? Continuing later in the same paragraph, quote, it was from the landowners that the peasants suffered the worst, most varied and most direct oppression. Thus, 85% of the population, the peasants, were in contradiction with the exploiting class that exploited them directly, the landowners. And continuing on the following page, Pol Pot states, quote, this contradiction was a life and death contradiction. This was a profound contradiction in Kampuchean society, one which impacted 85% of the population. It was for this reason that the first party Congress defined this contradiction as an antagonistic contradiction. This being the case, how could this contradiction be resolved? The peasants had to be whipped up to struggle and fight against the exploiting class, the feudalist landowners." End of quote. And Mr. President, I may have forgotten to mention uh, my colleague, uh, with your leave, uh, can show uh, excerpts from these documents on the screen as I as I go along, and he will put them up on the screen uh, uh, so that they can be viewed as, uh, as the In this um, 
same paragraph from Pol Pot's speech is a key statement that reflects the party's policy and views towards Buddhism and Buddhist leaders. Pol Pot states, and this is at Khmer 0006-3141, English 0048-6230, and French 0049-2816. And the speech here reads as follows, quote, The contradictions generated hatred, but in the past the contradictions were buried. Why were these contradictions buried? Because the landowner class, the Mandarin holders of power, and the spiritual leaders of the exploiting classes disseminated information to bury these contradictions. The belief that bad and good deeds from another life resulted in present conditions served to deceive the peasants and prevent them from seeing the contradictions. A few pages later in the speech at Khmer 0006314. English 0048-6233, French 0049-2820, Pol Pot states, quote, once we made the analysis of the contradictions within Campuchian society, how did we determine who were the enemies of the revolution and who were the revolutionary forces? There were two enemies who had to be fought. The first was imperialism, particularly American imperialism. The second was the feudal class, the landowners, the reactionary compradors. End of quote. The speech continues with a discussion of how some persons in the feudal aristocracy, some persons in the capitalist, and some persons in the landowner classes who were willing to fight against the enemy could be used and were used as tactical forces or allies. And then on the next page, Pol Pot makes reference to three categories of enemies established by the party's political lines. Quote, we divided our enemies into three groups. First, to win over those enemies who could be won over in some circumstances. Second, to neutralize those who could be neutralized so they could not carry out actions against us. Third, to isolate the most vicious in order to attack them. End of quote. At Khmer 0006314849, English 0048-6236-37, and French 0049-2824, Pol Pot describes the forms of revolutionary struggle that the party decided to use in order to attack and defeat its enemies, stating as follows, quote, The first Congress of our party specified the following forms of revolutionary struggle. The first form of struggle was to use revolutionary political violence and revolutionary armed violence, that is, to use revolutionary violence to engage in both political and armed struggle. This violence 
was the force to resist the enemy and to strike the enemy. The second form was legal, semi-legal, and illegal struggle, taking illegal struggle as the basic form. And continuing in the next paragraph, quote, the third category was the overt, semi-overt, and clandestine forms of struggle with the clandestine form as the basis. Pol Pot also makes clear in the speech the view of the party that its enemies were primarily located in the urban areas of Cambodia. Reading from Khmer 00063150, English 00486238 and French 00492826. Quote, our operational line was that the countryside was the support base. Why did we take the countryside as the base, and why did we not take the cities as the support base? The cities could not be used as a support base. Though the population there was large, the cities were small, the enemy was everywhere there. The assembly, the courts, the prisons, the police, and the soldiers were all there. The networks of the enemy's impressive apparatus were concentrated there, and the class composition of the cities was very complex. By contrast, the countryside was vast. The enemy was spread thin there. In some villages, there were no enemies, no soldiers. In some communes, there were only one or two soldiers or police. This meant the enemy forces in the countryside were weak. The peasants there were very numerous. The class composition was good. And at Khmer 00063160, through 61, English 00486245-46, and French 00492834-35. Pol Pot discusses the military strategy used to attack the enemy in the years and months leading up to April 1975, stating as follows, quote, as for the line of attacking the enemy, the party determined to fight both militarily and politically to strengthen the people against the enemy, economically by cutting off all the enemy's food supplies and especially by eradicating their various espionage networks. Continuing later in this paragraph, quote, their food supply became more precarious daily and in the end dried up completely. Their bosses, the American imperialists, were obliged to go to great lengths to transport their supplies. They had to send an average of 40,000 tons of supplies each month just to Phnom Penh. On the line of combat against the enemy, our party also concretely defined its line of combat in great detail in order to be able to attack the enemy under any circumstances. Our line of combat was to launch offensives continuously, giving constant play to creative spirit and initiative on every front. We waged 
conventional warfare and guerrilla warfare at the same time, using guerrilla warfare as the foundation in order to harass the enemy everywhere without let up, and using conventional warfare to wipe out enemy troops, end of quote. And near the end of this part of the speech, no, at Khmer, 000631631, 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 English 0048-6248, and French 0049-28-37-4. Pol Pot provided a summary of the key party lines that were agreed upon at the first Congress. Quote, the line of our party, defined in 1960, stated, one, to make national revolution by eradicating the imperialists, especially the American imperialists from Kampuchea, two, to make democratic revolution by abolishing the reactionary regime of the feudalists and comprador capitalists from Kampuchean society. We completely realized these two tasks on 17 April 1975. Your Honors, a few days after delivering this speech, Pol Pot left for an official visit to China, where at the end of that trip, on the 3rd of October 1977, he held a press conference with the Chinese state media, which was reported in document E3-2072, E3-2072. This is a document, uh, different parts of which has been presented to your honors, so I will focus on just a couple of quotes from it. It is a report from the Xinhua News Agency, re referenced here by its literal translation, the New China News Agency, or CNA, uh, that was published in the BBC's Summary of World Broadcasts on the 3rd of October 1977, and the report indicates that both Aung Sri and Warren Bett were also present during this press conference. And on this occasion, Pol Pot reiterated some of the key party lines relating to enemies, stating at Khmer 0029-62, 01 through 02, English S 0008, 05, 47, French S 00648890. Pol Pot stated as follows, quote, after putting forward the task of opposing imperialism, particularly U.S. imperialism, we set forth the task of opposing feudalism and the reactionary comprador bourgeoisie, thus confirming the basic forces and targets of the revolution. Continuing in the next paragraph, quote, we waged both overt and covert struggles with covert struggle as the basis. We waged both legal and illegal struggles with illegal struggle as the basis. We attached special importance to violent struggle, unfolding both violent political struggle and armed struggle with armed struggle as the main Form. And Pol Pot, during this press conference, also noted the party's rejection of the Khrushchev doctrine of peaceful transition to socialism, stating, quote, for us, the parliamentary road will get nowhere. Document E3-147, E3-147, includes a report of a speech 
given by Noon Chea on the 16th of January 1977 at a rally marking the 9th anniversary of the RAK. Excerpts of that speech were broadcast on the Phnom Penh domestic radio. And in the speech, Noon Chea discusses the strategic and tactical lines of the party. And I will read just one short quote from that. Khmer 0067-97-96, English 0016-84-67, French 0069-84-46. In the speech, Noon Chea states, quote, We held the well-defined stand that to crush and overthrow the U.S. imperialists, their lackeys, and all the exploiting classes. Political action alone would not succeed. The enemy used arms and totalitarian tools to repress and kill our people. For this reason, after 1960, our revolutionary organization clearly decided that political action and armed violence must be used to overthrow and crush the enemy. End of quote. The next group of documents that I will present, Your Honors, are uh, some further issues of the Revolutionary Fight, which show that the party line to use revolutionary violence against perceived enemies did not end when the CPK took power on 17 April 1975 but rather that this policy continued over the course of the DK regime. First is E3-760, E3-760, and this is the June 1976 issue of Revolutionary Flag. The second section of that issue contains uh, opinions and guidance provided by a party representative at a zone conference that was held in early June 1976. And at Khmer ERN 0006-2849, English 0050-9614 and French 0048-7759. The party representative made the following remarks regarding the enemy situation. Quote, what will the enemy do next? Are they strong or are they weakening? We may respond by saying that the enemy will carry out activities against us and against our revolution in various forms. This is a continual struggle between revolution and counter-revolution. It will not stop. Arm yourselves with the stance that the enemy exists, will exist for 10, 20, 30 more years. National people's struggle is like class struggle. In short, the struggle between revolution and counter-revolution will continue. Are they strong or not? This issue does not depend on them, it depends on us. If we take absolute and repeated measures, the enemy will weaken. They will scatter into bits. Next uh, document E3-742. Is the April 1977 issue of Revolutionary Flag, 
and it contains a speech given by a party representative on the second anniversary of the 17 April victory. And in the first section of the speech at Khmer 0006 29 English 0047849596 French 0049975358 the speech reads as follows, quote, As for the enemy, they have received serious blows of defeat during the past three months. The external enemies, the CIA, the KGB, and the UN have received extremely humiliating and serious defeats. Continuing in the next paragraph, quote, these enemies of all types strive to build espionage forces. All three of their major networks that have embedded and bored holes from within the party, the revolution, and our army during the past 27 years were discovered by us and were fundamentally smashed during the first trimester of 1977. Continuing on the next page. Page, As for the enemies that are CIA, KGB, and UN agents, the cheap running dogs of the enemy sneakily embedded inside our revolution and our revolutionary ranks, they are in a state of extreme loss of mastery because their major and intermediate apparatuses have fundamentally been smashed and the forces that remain have been fundamentally scattered, like rats being hit and falling from their nests into the water and being chased and struck by the people and annihilated. We must continue to strike them and trample them from our position of absolute advantage and must constantly be on the offensive against them during 1977 to smash them even more so they cannot raise their heads." End of quote. Later in this same speech at Khmer 0006299091, English 0047850001, and French 0049975653. The party cadres were instructed as follows, quote, past experience leads us to better understand and more clearly see that even though, excuse me, even though the internal and external enemies have been extremely seriously defeated in the past, they have not forsaken their strategies of opposing our correct Kampuchea revolution. They, the CIA part, the KGB part and the UN part still strive to struggle free to continue their criminal activities. This is a view that we must be constantly clear on in order to have a high-level spirit of revolutionary vi vigilance to resist and eradicate the enemy in advance with constant mastery. Continuing one paragraph below, quote, at this time, we recall a number of our plans as follows. A, it is imperative to have the view that our position is absolutely stronger than the enemy's and is strong in terms of high-level mastery and constant offensives against the enemy. B. 
continue to constantly raise high our spirit of vigilance towards the enemies inside the party, inside the army, and among the people. C. Have a clear view toward both the internal and external enemies and see their true nature. See that they are in life and death contradiction. And D. It is imperative to indoctrinate and whip up the masses into a force to seek out the enemy, assess the enemy, analyze the enemy, track the enemy, pressure the enemy, capture the enemy, to smash the enemy, and to make the enemy be like a rat surrounded by a crowd of people beating and smashing it." End of quote. In the, uh, a few months later, in the June 1977 issue of Revolutionary Flag, document E3-135, E3-135, uh, um, at the following year-end, Khmer 0062-802-03, English 0044-68-57-0. French 0048-7719. The party publication uh, provides the following assessment of efforts against internal enemies. Quote, we internally purge the party well at every echelon in every section from top to bottom. Many base areas were fundamentally sorted out. Some other base areas were mostly sorted out. All of them are fighting to further sort this out. Continuing two paragraphs below, quote, but in tandem with this, the embedded enemies are not yet all gone by any means. The veteran forces that the enemies pour holes into are not totally gone. Not many remain, but some do still remain and are scattered in the base areas in various units, ministries, and offices. How must we sort this out in the future? One, it is imperative to have the clear view and stance that the fight against the embedded enemies is not yet finished. Old remnants of the embedded enemies still remain, and they are even strengthening and expanding. Two, it is imperative to take absolute measures, making no compromise, making no allowances without hesitation or holding back at all. And that Khmer 0062 830, English 0044-68-79, French 0048-7744, the party leaders provided the following instruction, quote, the objective during the second half of 1977 is to concentrate sweeping the enemy clean and fundamentally eliminating the enemy in the various base areas, especially the cooperatives, end of quote. In this same issue of Revolutionary Flag, E3-135, the party leadership also identified former monks as belonging to the petty bourgeoisie class and indicated that it was this class that was most likely to contain the enemies of the party. I will read from Khmer 
3-0-6, English 0-0-4-4-6-8-5-9-6-0, and French 0-0-4-8-7-7-2-2-2-3. In uh, section 4, the document reads as follows, quote, based upon our past experience in attacking embedded enemies, the problem of class rises up as another major factor. In the past, embedded enemies mostly were petty bourgeois class elements. Continuing in the last paragraph of section 4 of this document, quote, this is a source the enemy can easily attract in any circumstances. This has been the experience, whether with city petty bourgeoisie, the rural petty bourgeoisie, petty bourgeoisie who have left the monkhood, or the middle peasants or some merchant peasants. Based upon this experience, we must take a firm stance on the class line of the party. Previously, we imp implemented the party line on class, but we were hollow, relaxed. From now on, we must carry out the party line on class well and in great leaps, end of quote. And from 1978, Honors Document E3-727 is the May to June 1978 issue of English 0-0-1-8-5-3-2-3-2-4 The party publication under experience number one states as follows, quote, the experience of our perpetual past combat, particularly from liberation to the present, has been one of unremittingly tense annual combat between us and the enemies. We have, up through the present, attacked and smashed increasingly numerous chunks of them. Continuing a few paragraphs later, quote, the measures which we are putting forward are no different from previous measures, but we must sharpen our stance and attack and eliminate internal enemies ever more acutely. And in the Instructions provided on essential duties, which can be found at Khmer 0006-4578-79, English 0018-5342-3. Through four three, French zero zero five two four four six nine through seven zero. The publication states, quote, Our duty is therefore to attack absolutely powerfully and success successively these CIA UN. KGB agents to attack them and attack them again so that they are liquidated and successively liquidated again and again. Only if they are attacked in this manner will their veteran forces be completely smashed along with their remnant forces and their new forces. We find ourselves in a situation where we are on the offensive, have mastery, and are advancing to trample the enemy and seize successive victories 
whereas the enemy is being smashed to smithereens, scattered to the winds, and liquidated. End of quote. This uh, issue of revolutionary flag, Your Honors, places particular emphasis on the Vietnamese as a targeted enemy. At Khmer, 00064567 English 00185333 and French 00524460 in a section titled What are the forces opposing our revolution? The party cadres were instructed as follows, quote, To sum things up, on the other side in the contradiction with us are the CIA, the UN, and the KGB. And among these, the UN are the most noxious and acute. Proceeding from such an analysis of this acute life and death contradiction, what are our attack measures? One, our sharpest attack is on the aggressive territory swallowing UN. Two, at the same time we attack the CIA and KGB. We attack simultaneously, but we pay most attention to attacking the UN because they are the most nauseous and acute. In the next issue of Revolutionary Flag for the month of July 1978, document E3-746, E3-746, the inflammatory language used by the party to target the Vietnamese continues. In the opening article of this issue, which is titled The National Duties of All of Us, at Khmer 00-64486 through 87, English 00-428289, French 00-611871. The publication states as follows, quote, the UN enemy has committed aggression against us and swallowed our territory and committed genocide against our Kampuchean race from one generation to the next. They have been our national enemy from the beginning up through the present and will be our enemy in the protracted future as well. Continuing three paragraphs later, quote, the national duty of all of us is to struggle to fight to eliminate our aggressive expansionist territory swallowing and genocidal UN enemy. Later in this issue, at Khmer 0006-45, Zero two. English zero zero four two eight three zero three through zero four and French zero zero six one one eight eight four. The party leaders commend quote, the quick burning flames of national and class hatred that have been broadly transformed into a great mass movement to eliminate the aggressive expansionist territory swallowing UN enemy and to sweep cleanly away the concealed enemies borrowing from within. Your Honors, a, a document 
uh, that is uh, relevant um, to show that the party lines relating to enemies and the use of revolutionary violence represented a collective understanding or agreement amongst the party leaders that, was to, that were to be implemented throughout the country is E3 slash 130, E3 slash 130, the CPK statute. This document has been covered in court, so I will not spend any significant time on it other than to note that Article 6.1 of the party statute provides, quote, all party leadership organizations must implement collective leadership, and Article 6.2, which provides, quote, all of the various decisions of the party must be made collectively, end of quote. Your Honor, the next uh, group, groups of documents that I will present are, were selected in order to show how each of the key organizations of Democratic Kampuchea and the CPK, the Central and Standing Committee, the ministries, the military, and the zones, how each of these organizations agreed to and participated in this common shared plan to smash the identified enemies of the party. And I will start with the Central Committee and Standing Committee. Uh, many of these documents are familiar documents, so I will just briefly touch upon them at this time. A document E3 slash 1173 is a 27 February 1976 circular from Committee 870 titled Instructions from 870 number 02 slash 76. And this is the circular that discusses a bombing or explosion in Siem Reap that occurred on or around the 25th of February 1976, which the Standing Committee in this document states was caused by American aircraft. The last page of this document contains the following instruction, quote, the Standing Committee proposes using this event to re-educate the party internally, the core organizations, the army, and the masses aimed at stirring up hatred of the enemy to be hot and sharp at all times, aimed at building the stance of constant revolutionary vigilance, end of quote. A little more than one week after the date of this document, on the 8th of March 1976, the Standing Committee held a meeting on base work. The minutes of that meeting are contained in document E3-232, E3-232. The minutes record the persons who attended the meeting, including Party Secretary Pol Pot, Deputy Secretary Noon Chea, Q Sam Han, Elias Hem, the Deputy Secretary of Zone 303, the Old North or Central Zone, Comrade Sreng, and the Secretaries of Sectors 106, which was Siem Reap, and Sector 103, Preva here, who reported to the party leaders on the situations in their regions. And in Section 2.1 of the minutes, Central Zone Deputy Secretary Sreng reported to the party leaders on activities relating to two groups in his zone. Quote, A Lun's group and their associates, 34 persons, whom the zone military have all already arrested, and the group of A Uk Moon alias Uk 
Hong, which attempted to flee to southern Vietnam and four or five of their associates. In regards to these groups, Comrade Srang asked for instructions from Ankar. In section 2.2, of these minutes. On the following page, Comrade Sot, the Secretary of Siem Reap, or Sector 106, reported on the enemy situation in his sector. And in regards to the bomb or explosion in Siem Reap that was the subject of the previous document I presented, Sot reported Quote, no clear roots of the events in Siem Reap on 24 February have been discovered. End of quote. And in the next part of the minutes, section 2.3, Secretary 103, Secretary Hong reported on the enemy situation in his sector, stating that along the Thai border, especially at Sat Prave here, there are no activities, but they send in spies, Thai nationals, whom we have captured. At the end of his remarks, Hong reported, quote, since January, almost 100 have been arrested. After these reports from the regional representatives in section 3.1 of the minutes, the Standing Committee provided the following instructions regarding the problems in Zone 303, the north, Old North Zone. Quote, as measure, must call in those named to question them to see what their responses are. We will not yet remove them from their positions. Next, call them in for further questioning in front of their accusers and watch to see their reactions. Therefore, there are two stages. Question, question and keep them at one site and report to upper echelon along with a case file. End of quote. The next document, another familiar document, is E3-12, which is the 30 March 1976 Central Committee decision, the first section of which is titled The Right to Smash Inside and Outside the Ranks. And I will reiterate here that in regards to the right to smash, the Central Committee decision states as follows, quote, if in the base framework to be decided by the Zone Standing Committee, surrounding the Center Office to be decided by the Central Office Committee, independent sectors to be decided by the Standing Committee, the Center Military to be decided by the General Staff. This document is put before the trial chamber as particularly relevant to the existence of a JCE or common plan among the Central Committee and the leaders of the various organizations that comprised Democratic Kampuchea to smash enemies both inside and outside the ranks of the party. Document E3-763 is a document that was issued by the Central Committee on the 20th of June 1978. Uh, we have covered the substance of this document before. Uh, so at this time, I will simply read the title of this document, which is rather descriptive. Quote, guidance of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Kampuchea on the party's policy towards misled persons who have joined the CIA, served as UN agents, or joined the KGB and opposed the party, revolution, people, and democratic Kampuchea. Quote, 
Another document from the Standing or Central Committee that I would like to present now is relevant to the party policy on Buddhism, and it is document E3-99, which is a party circular, party circular number 6, dated the 22nd of September 1975, entitled Follow-up of Implementation of the Political Line in Mobilizing the National Democratic Front Forces of the Party. And at Khmer 00, 0724402, English 00244275, and French 00611567. This uh, circular discusses how much. Oui, Monsieur le Président, euh, j'interviens à ce niveau pour, euh, en application de la décision de la Chambre de ce matin, et compte tenu du titre du document qui parle bien de la mise en application, euh, je souhaite que l'on ne puisse pas autoriser euh, Monsieur le Procureur à présenter ce document. If I may respond, I believe Council might be taking too technical uh, a view of the rule. The fact that the word implementation appears here does not mean that the document does not contain discussion that is relevant to determining the policy of the party. Uh, so I, I do not think any time the word implementation appears, uh, the, the document is off limits. This is a document that is, reflects the party policy, and that is why it is put forward uh, by the prosecutors. បាទសេចក្តីកម្មហាយកសារនេះគឺសិទ្ធិនៅក្នុងបរិសាលភាពនៃការសម្រេចរបស់អង្គជំរះលទ្ធបងកាលពីព្រឹកមិញដូច្ន
any worry. And at this time, Mr. President, I'm going to turn to a different uh, group of documents, so if it is appropriate time for the, for the lunch break, this would be a convenient time to break ແລະនេះដល់ពេលសម្រាក់ថ្ងៃត្រង់ហើយឲ្យមានការសម្រាក់ចាប់ពីនេះទៅទៅរហូតដល់ម៉ោងប្រមួយ